Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. You know who's someone whose work I really, really love? And it's somebody we can really learn a lot from. And that's Gesser. The guy's just sick. I mean, there's no two ways about it. And particularly, what I really enjoy about his work is how he really varies his letters. This isn't somebody that just does one thing over and over again because they know it works. This is somebody who's extremely knowledgeable about what they're doing, and as a result, they're able to switch it up, resulting in many different kinds of letters that still keep the same overall aesthetic. And that, my friends, is what we're going to be taking a look at today. We can see that right here looking at his G. If we take a look at this first G and compare it to this G, they're two different structures of G. They're not the same at all whatsoever. And we see this continuously throughout his work. While something like this might be a slight variation on a different G like this one right here, the overall look of it is very different. What we can see throughout his work though is something known as artist habits. Artist habits are something every single artist has, especially more skilled artists. And to break it down real nice and easy, an artist habit simply is just something an artist continuously does throughout a lot of their different works. And this also includes mistakes that they make. For example, Leonardo da Vinci had an artist habit where he oftentimes messed up on foreheads. That that is just as much of an artist habit as Gesser who likes to put extensions on the left hand side of his G. This is a really optimal place to put extensions on a G, I mean, you know, I may or may not have a G in my name, and it's somewhere where I also put a lot of extensions because of the same reason. It's a really easy spot to land an extension on a G. But why does he do this? If we take a look at his name, his R's tend to be tremendous, and as a result he typically has to balance that out on his G as well, which makes it a really great spot to throw an extension or to in order to help with that balance. And his extensions tend to follow the three typical rules that we previously mentioned here on the channel. And for those of you guys who are new here, essentially with extensions you want one of three of these different properties. These three properties being, you want it to flow out of the origin, you want it to have a reason for the travel distance, and or you want it to flow back at the destination. And the reason for this is because extensions are nothing more than just a detail. And details in every single art form are useless by nature, and as a result, you gotta give them a reason to be there. So when we take a look at Gesser for example, we can see that this extension here on the S does actually flow out of the origin. Notice how he starts off horizontally before shooting diagonally. While sure he could have actually made this work by shooting diagonally first without this horizontal bit, the horizontal bit does help in slight for the flow. He then uses the reason for the travel distance to fill in this negative space right here and even flows during the travel distance right here with line uniformity and similarity. And then what happens? He shoots over here for the destination where he has a little bit of line uniformity and similarity but not too too much. And you can see at least one of these properties present throughout all of his extensions. Another thing that I like that he does exceptionally well, we can see it here in this piece right here, is he does letter and name weight phenomenally. Look at how the G is massive, it's tremendous, and despite the fact that this structure for the letter E typically yields a lot more letter name weight, here it doesn't weigh all that much. Instead of weighing very minimal amounts, while he uses his S to weigh an absolute ton. Because this is a five letter name, the S is going to be more so the anchor letter, the letter that he can use every now and again in order to make it really large to hold down the rest of the piece, and that's precisely what we see here. The S is tremendous, acting as a strong center point for the left hand side of the name, the GE, and the right hand side of the name, the ER. We move on to the next E once again, it doesn't weigh all that much, but then the R balances out the G from the beginning by weighing an absolute ton. Add on top of this, one point perspective 3D going directly down the center, and what we have is a 3D aiding the weight back towards the anchor letter, being the S. This is great for letter name weight, and he did a phenomenal job on it. This is something we can also see done once again here on this piece as well. This is starting to become a bit of an artist habit, let's check his other pieces. Yup, once again, he's got that split between the G, the S, and the R dominating in the weight department. And once again, he's doing it here as well. And again right there. Less so in this one because the R doesn't weigh as much as the G, but it's still happening. So this is definitely an artist habit. When you're dealing with weight to this extreme, your letter structure begins to change quite a lot. And not only that, your negative space management and your letter name positioning also tends to change. And as a result, flow usually is heavily affected. This is why letter name weight, when you start to kind of delve into a little bit more advanced letter name weight, it can be a little bit difficult because you're going to have to change everything about your name in order to make it function. And this is something that he does a great job at. He really pushes the extreme of the weight for the G, the S, and the R consistently throughout his work, and this means that his E's have to compensate for this in some way. Even though the E's are smaller and more condensed, they're not overshadowed by the other letters enough to where they're not noticeable. You notice these letters aren't hidden. You can still make them out, you can still very easily see them, and as a result, read them. They do a great job in order to play their part in the piece by flowing naturally using line uniformity and similarity as well as letter uniformity and similarity. We can see that in areas right here where he has this kind of 
swoosh that leads into a bit of a serif. He maintains this throughout the piece, as you can see right here in the E and right here in the R, and little things like this also do a good job to help. And less noticeable over here in little areas like this as well. The serifs throughout the name are also much the same, as are these little divots that cut into the letter, which we can see throughout the piece as well. It's little details like this that take a letter that might otherwise feel out of place and make it feel more at home. Something I also want to point out on this piece is how he has the drop shadow here, which actually achieves a pretty dark value, but he already has a pretty dark value 3D, and as a result, it would clash with the drop shadow. So what does he do? He adds a little hint of a key line with this lime green, this kind of yellowish green, between the 3D and the drop shadow, which is what makes us get that three-dimensionality to it. And can we just mention this little effect he's doing here? I love the way he cut out pieces of the letter and then gave it a little bit of drop shadow to add that three-dimensionality to it. Really looks beautiful. Now we also get to see that key line effect happening here as well, where he adds that key line in order to contrast the drop shadow against his darker 3D. A little something like that goes a long way in order to pop your piece back off the wall. But dudes, let me know what you guys think about Gesser's work. I think it's absolutely amazing. I love his stuff. If you guys want me to go ahead and analyze and break down a different graffiti artist, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and drop their Instagram if you know it. And if you enjoyed today's video, remember to hit the like button. It helps us out a bunch. For those of you guys who are new here, feel free to subscribe. Become part of the smartest graffiti community anywhere online. We have an amazing how to do graffiti tutorial playlist right here. It's got the best graffiti tutorials you can possibly find. And we have more graffiti content right here on the bottom. So there's some more content for you to enjoy. With all that said, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next week. But until then, peace.